Hello there, I'm Michael McNamara. And as you can see, I'm self-isolating in my little loft because I can't make sales from home. Um, in a normal year, um, I'd have looked back on the summer of lots of open meetings and championships, uh, usually in my Albacore, Wayfair or my beautiful Hornet. But of course this year that hasn't been possible. And so what we've done is we've gone back to club sailing. And it's been great. Uh, good turnouts. Um, I think that's in common with lots of clubs in the UK, certainly uh, on the Norfolk Broads. Uh, lots of the Broadland clubs have had uh, increased fleet sizes. It's not only the fleet size, of course, though it's the quality of the racing has been good. Tight, close, tactical stuff where if you make a mistake, you get penalised. The snag is that quite often you don't know you've made a mistake until you begin that uh, downward slide down the fleet. The fleet has been mostly lasers, well it's mostly single-handed actually, lasers and a really well sell solo, and I've been able to keep up most of the time uh, in my Harrier, although that, that is until we have to do all that sitting out nonsense. Um, but there are lessons to learn, in fact, I would, it's actually more accurately lessons relearned. And the big one for me is when you sail on small lakes, surrounded by trees, uh, where even if you were the best one in the world, you'd have to describe the wind as being variable, is the need to look ahead. When you know when a gust is coming because the water's darker. Um, but what you want to do is to make sure that you see what's about to come so that when it comes, it doesn't come as a complete surprise. I mean, an increase in wind means that the sailors have to move. And if the sailors have to move, then the sails have got to be adjusted to accommodate the change in wind. If you don't, as the wind gets up, if you don't, the main can become unstable. The leech opens up, the front backs, and, and power is lost. Of course, you're going to heel over as well. Do you lose more when it's windy, because you don't adjust to, to stop the sail from flogging, or do you lose more in the light stuff when the tired, slow-moving air trying to get over the sail just, just gives up and the boat will go slow? I think you lose more in the lighter stuff. So how do you organise this? What I do is to make sure that I look at the luff of the mainsail in the top third, in the number panel. If there was a jib involved, it would be where the jib hazard goes into the mast. Even on single-handed boats, that is where the sail will back windward. Air hitting the leeward side. Why does it hit the leeward side? It hits the leeward side in that position because the leech is too open. The leech falling away actually pushes the leeward front of the sail away which causes the back wind so it's all down to kicker really all you need to do to make sure that you've got the right amount of kicker tension the right amount of leech tension is to just look at the mainsail in that number panel is it back winding yes you need more downward force more downward load on the kicker is it not back winding no then you do need to ease the kicker because we're a sail is at its most efficient at its most efficient when it's just on the point of back winding it's an easy check actually to see whether you've got the right all you need to do is just to ease the main sheet out and if you've got the right amount of kicker right amount of downward load on the back bottom corner all that will happen is the, f the whole front of the sail will backwind at the same time. And remember the rule, if it backwinds at the top, you need more kicker. If it backwinds at the bottom, you need less kicker. So by looking ahead, seeing what's about to come, you can actually, your hand can already be getting down towards the kicker. If the wind is going to get up or if the wind is going to drop, you can get ready to uncleat. Looking ahead is the key, getting ready for what's about to come. Thank you very much.